Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, The Organization of Living Things. This is the first video and we're just going to do a bit of a review of cells and organelles. We're going to try and bring together some of the key concepts from the first module and also lead into some of the important things that we're going to be talking about in this module. What we're going to do in this first one is quickly review the cell theory. Now, there's a couple of important things that you need to be aware of as far as the cell theory is concerned. Firstly, that a cell is the fundamental unit of life. And that's probably the most important thing that we need to say. Even though we do recognize um, that living things, or at least um, those that have the ability to reproduce in living organisms, aren't always uh, what we might classify as cellular. In terms of biology, the cell is the currency. The cell is the basic fundamental unit of life. All living things are single cells or aggregates of cells. And we're going to be looking in a little bit more detail at unicellular and multicellular organisms as well as colonial organisms and see if we can um, tell the difference between these three. A cell is the smallest unit of life that's capable of independent reproduction and all cells come from pre-existing cells. And it's that idea of independent reproduction that puts things like viruses off the cell list. Viruses usually need a host for them to reproduce and therefore they don't have that. We don't have that idea of independent reproduction. Viruses are a very special group and obviously um, in the time of COVID-19, which is uh, when this is being recorded, uh, viruses are one of the things that we're most aware of at the moment. Um, but they're not cellular. They're more crystalline than cellular and they have some, some very unusual differences um, that we see that deviate from what we expect to find in type in, inside cells. So they will be something that we'll look at in a little bit more detail, but we will save that until our uh, HSC course next year. So in terms of looking at um, organism diversity, we've got three different types of organisms that we need to look at. The first of those is unicellular. Now unicellular are solitary cells, that is, uh, as the name suggests, they are one cell. All of the important processes of life occur in the one cell. So the one cell is responsible for everything, respiration, excretion of wastes, uh, for reproduction, all of the processes that are important to life all happen within that one cell. There's no specialization, there's no difference, the whole organism is just a single cell. And of course, organisms like uh, prokaryotic organisms are part of our understanding of uh, unicellular organisms. Now, colonial cells are clusters of single cells. Now, these are um, identical cells. Usually, they're identical cells. There may be a small amount of specialization here, but most of the time, when we're talking strictly about colonial organisms, we're looking at identical cells that um, function together. An idea of strength in numbers you might call it. Now the important thing about these is that the cells themselves still retain the integrity of a, a unicellular organism, but together they can function as a group of cells. And we'll look at an example of that in a moment. And um, the best example, of course, of multicellular organisms are humans. You and I are multicellular. And the interesting thing about us is that we have a whole range. First of all, we're made up of more than one cell, so we've got we've got trillions of cells, but so many different types of cells, cells that have been specialized, um, that look different, and that have a different function or a different role that they must play to keep the whole organism functioning properly. So what we're going to be doing in this topic is we're going to be looking at, well, we're really going to be focusing mostly on multicellular organisms because that's the group that we're most familiar with. And in the last topic, we spent a lot of time looking at cells and the structures within cells and how they function. So now we want to have a look at how they work together to um, help uh, an entire organism uh, to function. So the first of these little groups is the unicellular. So a protozoan like an amoeba is 
uh, a really good example of a unicellular organism. You'll notice its little pseudopodia, which virtually literally means false feet. So these little extensions that kind of move the amoeba around are uh, amoeba hunters. So this uh, particular cell is actually capable of, of finding and engulfing food. Um, but all of its body processes all occur within this one cell. Everything that is part of what it is as an organism is all contained within just this one cell. So this idea of one cell uh, is life. And all the life processes occur just within this one cell. Volvox is an interesting uh, organism, or at least a colonial organism, because it's a cluster of cells. Um, as you can possibly guess from the green color, uh, it's a plant, it's an alga. Uh, but these little green regions are not, um, as you might expect, a chloroplasts within a large cell. What you're actually looking at here um, in each of these individual little spheres is an entire colony. So the, the little green spots there are probably uh, daughter colonies. Which may be, uh, which may eventually actually emerge from uh, the Volvox colony and, and effectively start another little colony. These are little balls of cells, somewhere between um, 500 and um, it varies on the numbers. It depends on which books you look at. Um, to up to 60,000 individual cells, which clustered together, um, produce these Volvox colonies. This is a different type of organization of uh, a living organism because the cells still are individual cells, but together they work um, as a team to create these larger colonies. And of course, there's a number of different organisms that do this, and we'll look at a couple of examples of these uh, in the classroom or <laughs> online. Uh, finally, as I said, um, we are multicellular, so we are able to identify uh, distinct structures. So if you think about the difference between uni and colonial, you can't see very much difference when you look at the organism itself. It's one cell, the cells all look identical. Um, it's hard to tell except for some slight modifications or some slight differences exactly um, what sort of levels of a difference or specialization there may be. But when you look at a multicellular organism, you can see it's different. Here is a planarian worm, a flat worm. Uh, you can see its little uh, region, which looks like uh, a head region with uh, eyes. Uh, you can see a pharynx, uh, what looks to be distinct regions within this particular organism. And therefore, as a result of that, lots and lots of different types of cells. And that is the critical key to multicellular organisms. Multicellular organisms are made up of a range of different types of cells, and each of those cells uh, has a specialized uh, shape, usually, uh, and that shape is uh, designed to help it carry out its specific function. So we're gonna go into cell specialization and differentiation to important but different but related terms when we look at the next video. Thanks for watching.